Hey foodies, thanks for watching. Today I'm going to show you how to make pierogies, gluten free pierogies. And today we're going to start with the filling. Now I've already boiled my potatoes and I want to make sure that they're cooked. And oh, yeah, see the fork goes right in really nicely. That's telling me that they're ready to be drained and riced. So I've got a ricer here. If you have a masher, you can use a, mash, a mashed potato masher, but I'm gonna use a ricer. It gives a more consistent texture. And to start, I'm just putting in some of the potatoes. I've used about three potatoes. Um, because it's a filling, it's all gonna go on taste, mostly. So we're gonna rice, and this is gonna spurt everywhere. There we go. That's the start. Look at it come out. Isn't that nice? I always think it looks so pretty. And I'm just using a, a standard white potato. Okay, so before I add the last of the potatoes in, I'm going to scoop them in, but I'm going to add my cheese. So I'm just going to put the last of the potatoes into the ricer. Get this pot out of the way. There we go. Okay, I'll just set that there. And I've got a half a block of cream cheese. I've started to let it soften, but the warmth from the potato is going to ha help it soften even more. And that's why I'm doing it half and half, so that it has hot underneath and hot on top. go. Scrape that off. Look at that. And if you want, you can even take some of this and you can just throw it in because it's all been mashed now. Okay, so I've wiped my counter off because I like a clean surface. The cheese is under here. It's softening up. I'm going to add a little bit of salt to start. And because it's potatoes, you don't have to be shy. Potatoes love their salt. And a bit of pepper. And again, this is this is to taste. So we're going to just mash the cream cheese and mix it all up. You can see it's softening up really nicely already. Oh, it smells good already. And it's just cheese, pepper, and salt and potato. Okay, I'm going to switch to a spoon because it's all been quite blended nicely. Oh, look at that. It's so nice looking. Okay, so it needs a bit of onion. I love using green onion or chive. And I was thinking, why not a little bit of chive in there? This is like five or six stems of chive. And we're going to just mix that in. Smells really good. Okay, the part I love, we have to taste it. It needs some salt. Not a lot, just a bit. And that's where it's important when you're cooking to always taste. And I find to encourage my kids to, because they always want little snacks and they want to try things. And I'm like, well, you have to help me. And they love helping me now because they get to taste the food as we go. And it's, it's, it's a little bit of an incentive, I find. It's incentive for me, that's for sure. Okay, so I'm going to try it one more time. Now that I've added my salt, not as much of a bite this time. It's perfect. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside. And we're going to get going on the dough. Again, I'll wipe my counter off. And today, I'm using Frankie's Gluten-Free All-Purpose Flour. It's a great all-purpose flour. It works cup for cup. I just love using it, especially when it comes to making gluten-free things. So I'm going to start by adding two-thirds of this. 
And it's a little trick I actually picked up over the last week or so for making pastry and dough, and it works like magic. So there's that. We need our half a teaspoon of salt. I'm using kosher salt. If you want to use an iodized or a sea salt, you want to decrease the amount of salt by half. And I need a third of a cup of hot water. And two eggs. And I'm going to crack them in a separate dish just to make sure I don't get any shell in there. There's one. And two. Okay, so I'm going to mix this up. Okay, so at this point, my dough is very sticky. And this is where I'm going to pull it out of the bowl and I'm going to start kneading it just by hand a little bit to get rid of that stickiness. So generous flouring of the surface. There we go. And I probably won't use all of this flour. It really depends on the environment outside. So if it's super humid out, I find I don't actually need as much. It's really bizarre, but you can ask pretty much any baker and they'll give you the same response. That's, that's good to roll out. So I'm going to set this out of the way. Let me get rid of that. Oh, I got more room now. There we go. Okay. So well floured surface. I'm going to roll this out, making sure that I always keep underneath well floured. And the trick with pierogi is you don't want the pastry or the, the dough too thin. If it goes too thin, it's going to start to to marbleize and stretch and get little pockets of holes. So if you, you just keep it, I'm going about pastry thickness. So like pie pastry, so like three to four millimeters thick. It's actually quite thick. Okay, I think that is pretty much perfect. So I'll set that there. And I've got a three inch uh, cutter. It's a round cutter. You can do this by hand. I find using these is so quick. You can also use a glass, but I find with the blunt edge, it's just, it smushes the dough a little bit. So if you use something with a sharper edge, it cuts it much nicer. And you just cut out circles. Whew, look at that. We're going to lift all the dough up. Look at that. That's beautiful. Oh, we got one. No. There we go. Okay, so this I'm going to use for the next round. So I'll just put that right there. Okay, so now we need a little bit of hot water. That, which just had my egg in it, and that's all right. Just a little bit of water because you're going to dip your finger in there. And this is where it's all going to come together. So I get a spoon of this ready. I'm going to dip my finger and run my finger along the outside edge of this. And that just helps it seal. And then take about a teaspoon's amount. And then we're going to fold it ever so gently, hoping I didn't get too much there. I got a little bit too much. Oh, but this looks Beautiful. I'm going to use a little less next time. That is our first pierogi. I'm very excited about that. So I'm just going to set that on a cookie sheet and I'm going to do the next one. And it's just repeat. Okay, so a little bit less this time. So what you have to keep in mind with gluten-free dough is it's not going to stretch nearly as much as a wheat dough. So you have to be a little on the conservative side when it comes to filling your dough. 
because I mean look at that that's that's exactly what you want there's nothing oozing out on the sides it's sealed it looks really nice so I'm gonna do a few more and then we're gonna cook them up and boom just like that they're done which is exciting I've set the rest of them aside I'm just gonna cook up a few of these so that we can try them get right into it so I've got my pot of water boiling and I'm gonna start popping these in. They only take about two to three minutes. So there's one, two, three, five, six. Let's do six to start, see how it goes. While that's getting ready, I'm gonna get my plate ready because I am hungry and I'm looking for trying these. I've also got my pan over here, it's heating up. It's not on camera just yet, but I'm gonna get some butter melting so that when the pierogi are done, I can just pop them into the pan. So when you're making pierogi, you can either enjoy them right after they've been boiled, or you can pan fry them just a little bit, just to give them that little bit of golden crispiness. It's so good. Okay, so let's try it. Look at these pierogi. Oh, they're starting to float. Look at that. Look at that! They're coming up! Oh, it's so exciting! It's almost like they're dancing in there. All oh, that butter starting to brown. Okay, so my pierogi are done. I'm gonna pull them out and I'm gonna switch my pans. Okay, so I'm taking those out, making sure that. Oh, that sounds lovely. Put that in there for now. So I'm just going to give these a, a minute or so to cook. I'm going to flip them over. I'm going to have a plate full of pierogi to enjoy. So we'll see what that looks like. Oh, that's what you're looking for, that little bit of brownness. See the crispiness there? That's all you're looking for. These are going to be chewy and soft, but crisp on the outside. They're so good. Okay, I'm, I'm calling it. I think they're done. So that's yeah, little green onion from my garden, and just lightly chop that up as a garnish. There we go, and a little sprinkling. Oh, look at that! I love it, love it. So this is a side of sour cream. You can also use yogurt, and either work really well. They're, they add a little bit of sourness, and it just really brightens the flavor up. So let's. Cut one of these up. Oh, they've held really nicely together. You can see that like, they're, they're glued nicely together. The inside looks really nice. Okay, little dip. Mm. Mm. I mean, this didn't take much to cook at all. I think you could make something like this I want to hear all about what your favorite filling is for pierogi. Is it just potato and onion? Or do you go like right off into to another world and explore like sun-dried tomato and spinach? Or do you add meat to your pierogi? I look forward to reading all of your comments below. Thanks for watching.